What's up KPL crew? This is Ryan from Knife Pivot Loop here today to talk about knife hacks. These are the dark arts of knifedom, the little tricks that we like to share or keep to ourselves. I'm going to show you five or six of my very favorite. In the pocket today, I've got a Benchmade Anthem. This pocket knife made by Benchmade is perhaps one of the best models they've ever developed. It is an integral titanium access lock pocket knife meaning that it's made out of one solid piece of titanium machined. It comes with this matching pocket clip that is also a machined piece of titanium, unique for Benchmade. This one's wearing an MXG deep carry clip in titanium, just to give it that deep carry flare. And it rides on bearings, which is unusual for Benchmade. Unfortunately, this knife has been discontinued, but if you can find it on the secondary market, snap one up because they are, are no more being made currently. It's got a really cool action, which is unique uh, from other Benchmade folders, and that is mostly due to the unique spring mechanism inside that pushes that axis lock bar forward. We're gonna be using this guy today to demonstrate some of my favorite tricks. All right, before we do get started today, as you know, I don't often take my pocket knives apart. Most of the time, I leave them assembled, particularly when they're an integral knife like this. Um, I've been working with this one for a while now. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it some lubrication. I use knife pivot lube on my knives. I typically add it without even taking them apart. It's just a single drop to each side of the blade right down there near the pivot. I let that work itself into the blade a little bit and then simply swab away any excess or dirt. I'm using knife pivot lube uh, microfiber swabs here for this purpose. They do a really great job of picking up that extra dirt and grit and in that way, KPL cleans your pivot as you use the knife. No need necessarily to take your knife apart unless you just like it or it gets really, really filthy, in which case it sometimes can make sense. <laughs> All right, for our first knife hack, we're gonna cover how to open a box. Now this may sound silly, but all of us have done damage to something inside a box by getting a little too aggressive with our pocket knife. These blades typically come with a, a cutting edge that's somewhere in the neighborhood of two, three, even four inches. There's a tendency when we're using these knives to, as we're slitting along the tape line, allow the knife to sink a little deep into the box and damage what's inside. This is the reason why many retail stores force their employees to use those terrible tiny box slitters that aren't even a knife, but we can replicate the function of those things by just shortening the blade that we're working with. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is just choke up on the blade so far that I'm just showing maybe a quarter or an eighth of an inch of blade over my thumb. And then we use our thumb as a limiter there and we cut at an angle. That way, as the knife is making its cut, it's impossible for it to slip any further into the box and do any damage. We can do the same thing on the sides here where our thumb is limiting the depth to which the knife will cut through that tape and slit along the side. Same thing on this side, nice shallow cut. Fold our knife up and we're open without any damage to what's inside the box. Tip number two. A lot of us work in offices or in locations where carrying a big knife may not be necessarily prohibited, but may also not be socially appropriate. It may be, in fact, politically incorrect to whip out a big three-inch folder uh, in the lunchroom or in the mailroom. What I like to do on those occasions is simply take my knife out and kind of hide it within my hand uh, there are a lot of things that we can cut, like envelopes, which we can slit open without ever deploying the knife with that loud clack and uh, showy flipping action. What I like to do is pull the knife out and conceal it mostly within my hand. I can then gently crack that blade open to the side and just use the tip of the knife as a slitting tool and cut through that envelope without ever really showing what I've got in my pocket. Now we can slip that pocket knife back into our pocket without anyone ever being the wiser. Similarly, if we've got to cut string or a small piece of rope, we can do the same thing. Simply stretch the string, deploy the pocket knife part way, hidden mostly in our hand, we can just make a nice cut. Again, no one's the wiser. No need to whip out the whole blade when all you need is a quarter inch of it. All right, tip number three, we're sharpening pencils using our pocket knife. This can be incredibly difficult, surprisingly because we have a tendency as we're pushing through the wood to then hit the lead in the pencil and cut just too far. And I'll demonstrate that here. We're making our nice cut and boom, we've broken the lead on our pencil. That's no good. 
I have a trick that I've learned as I've sharpened pencils for my children over the years that works very, very well. All right, so rather than just taking a nice slice out of the pencil, what I'm gonna do alternatively, and I'll see if I can get this in frame, is I'm going to cut at a very steep angle down towards the lead. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm pulling the knife up and away from the pencil while pushing forward. So I'm pushing and also pulling upward. And as that knife reaches the level of the lead in the pencil, it's simply going to pull up and away rather than traveling through and breaking the lead all the way. One more cut ought to do us. And there we go. We've exposed the lead on that pencil. You can see that it has a nice tip and a sharp transition to that tip and we haven't broken the lead unnecessarily. All right, and for this tip, we are talking zip ties. These things are the enemy and the bane of pocket knives everywhere. The reason for that is that the nylon that these are made out of is very tough. Nylon's a very tough plastic. Also, what we end up doing is getting ourselves into situations as we're trying to cut through these that are just really bad for our knives. We're either trying to cut through one with something hard behind it so that we tend to bonk our knife into metal or stone or something hard, or we try to wedge our blade underneath these and cut or pry. Uh, they're just bad news, no matter how you, how you slice it. Even if we're trying our very best to put that uh, pressure, that cutting pressure right in the direction of the edge of the knife, we have a tendency to get off kilter and put some lateral force on the blade, which can end up causing chips. My tip for zip ties is skip the knife entirely, go with a pair of cutters, and save your knife from that damage that is almost inevitable if you try to cut zip ties on a regular basis. By the way, these are my favorite cutters, uh, Nipex. I'm a huge fan of their pliers and cutters. I'll throw a link to these down in the description. Uh, any of their products are excellent and their cutters are especially tough and capable of handling just about anything you might throw at them. All right, for our next tip, I'm borrowing a flipper really quickly. This one is a Lion's Steel KUR. It's got a very stiff detent and a bit of a sharp flipper tab back here. I love the knife, but after a day of carrying it, it can give me a little bit of a bruise on the pad of my finger. I'm not one to complain about that, but it can get a little painful, especially when you play with this all day since it is such an addictive pocket knife. My tip here is that instead of using the pad of our finger, we can actually use the spot in between our first and second joint of the index finger and do the same thing. I just curl my finger around the back end of the knife and pull. You actually get almost exactly the same amount of launch force out of that action. And for whatever reason, this part of the finger tends to be a little more durable to those sharp flipper tabs and hard detents. I do love the action that they provide, but they can be a little rough. All right, for our next tip, we're cutting fruit. I use my pocket knives all the time to cut my apples, avocados, etc. What we end up sometimes trying to do is work with our knife way out in front of us out here and control two things with two hands. The problem is we don't have a lot of stability in either one of our hands when we're doing that and it is possible to cut yourself as you slip with your knife uh, due to just the, the lack of stability provided when you're cutting out here. I take a lesson from my rifle shooter friends uh, in this regard and try to give myself the most points of stability against my body as possible as I'm cutting fruit. So what I do is rather than work way out in front of my body like this, I'll pull my elbows right in against my chest, especially the knife hand, and keep that completely still as I do my cut. I'll move the fruit as the knife stays completely immobile, and that minimizes the chances of us cutting ourselves because if something slips, the knife blade is not going to go flying. Likewise, as I'm trying to remove the pit, this tends to be a pretty dangerous thing to do. Lots of emergency room visits from it. I'll move the fruit rather than the blade and then make my twist and remove it. Very little danger to yourself as you're using this knife hack. Now, before we put our knife blade away, we're of course going to want to wipe it down. This knife comes in a 20 CV blade, which is very rust resistant, but some of our knife steels are not as rust resistant as the high stainless steels. If we just go ahead and wipe the blade off before we put it away, we're gonna save ourselves a lot of grief in the form of rust spots and corrosion on our pocket knives. Likewise, guys, for those of you who store your knives in a storage box like a Pelican, something that's sealed up nice and tight, I find these Z-Rust Plast Tabs to be just an awesome solution for, for preventing corrosion, especially if you own something in, say, crew wear, a uh, sleepner like my flipper here, that can be a little bit more prone to rust, 
or something in carbon steel, if you just throw one or two of these into your storage uh, tray and they're just a thin piece of plastic, they'll prevent any corrosion that could happen uh, in that sealed compartment. What these do is they emit a vapor that's invisible, it's harmless to your knives, and that vapor prevents the corrosion process from even starting on the surface of the steel. Uh, they're very easy to use. They don't damage knives even if they're right up against them. Um, and that vapor really just kind of creeps its way through the entire box and keeps you safe within a radius of, uh, this one works for about seven inches. So in a medium sized box, I might throw two or three of these in. They're very inexpensive. We're gonna be adding these to our website shortly. Just uh, one uh, tip is that they recommend that you don't put these in direct contact with something that is made of copper. So if you've got a knife with a copper handle scale, uh, don't throw it right up against it. Otherwise, you're going to be just fine. I use these in my firearms cases and knife cases all the time. Go ahead and find those in our website, probably in a week or two. All right, and for our final tip, we're gonna be covering some detail cuts. This is when, although you're using a very large blade or a medium-sized blade like this Benchmade Anthem, you want to make cuts that are as detailed and as fine as possible. Rather than cutting with one hand and, and making a big slice, what you're gonna to wanna to do is choke up on your knife and uh, really get your fingers toward the front end of that knife. Hold the other object that you're planning to cut in the other hand and then we're going to apply cutting force, not using the knife hand, but using the hand that's actually holding the object. That limits the amount of motion that we can put into the knife blade and prevents us from making mistakes that are much larger than we would like to. You can see that if I try to make a cut on this piece of wood using my knife hand, what I tend to do is push through the object rather than stop where I'd like to. If, on the other hand, I use the thumb of my off hand, my left hand in this case, and push using that, I can go ahead and stop that cut wherever I would like to. On this piece of fat wood, I simply wanted to make some very small shavings. And you can see how much control I have over the blade as I make that cut using my off hand as the pushing hand rather than the holding hand for the knife. I can just flake those off and those would be great for starting a low fire using something like a fire steel. Something that's going to be very hard to do using uh, gross motor movements of your entire arm as opposed to the thumb, which is good at those finer motor movements. All right, another item for detail cuts. On occasion, we want to make a push cut through something. Perhaps we're chopping vegetables. Here, I've got a piece of rope that's been waxed. I wanna cut this off flush, which means I wanna make a 90 degree cut to the object that I am uh, cutting through. What we have a tendency to do when we're using our knives is to just go ahead and throw this down on a rock or on a countertop or in the dirt and then go ahead and make our push cut and the knife will go right through the object that we're cutting and into whatever's behind it. That can be dangerous for our knife blade and our edges. I covered that in one of my other videos called Your Knife Has Enemies where we talked about the danger to our knife blades from things like cutting boards, uh, dinner plates, etc. What I like to do is just throw down a couple of sheets of paper behind what I'm cutting Typically, those are going to be thick enough to stop the blade as it travels through the ob object that we're cutting and prevent it from doing damage to its own edge. I carry right in the rain notebooks in my pocket to take notes throughout the day. These have a cover that's actually made out of plastic. They're backed up with lots of paper and they're tough enough to take that uh, cutting abuse without suffering any substantial damage. So if I cut through that piece of rope, you can see that I've made a perfect flush cut and all that's left behind on my notebook is a little cosmetic mark. It's not actually cut through the cover at all and I've saved my knife edge from permanent damage that would have otherwise occurred had I cut against something like a rock, the dirt, or a plate. I'll go ahead and wipe my knife blade down and there we have it. Hey, thanks you guys for joining me today on the video. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. You can find all the materials that we used in the video today in the links in the description below. We've got knife pivot lube. We also use our microfiber swabs for some cleaning. The Lion Steel KUR can be purchased on any one of our partners' websites. And if you'd like to purchase something like the Benchmade Anthem, go ahead and pick that up on the secondary market from a trusted seller before they're completely gone. This is Ryan from Knife Pivot Lube. We're signing off.